There are three random variables, x, y, and z. The correlation between variables x and y is equal to 0 0.8. Similarly, the correlation between variables x and z is also 0 0.8. Given this information, between variables y and z, what is the maximum and minimum correlation possible? So we have three random variables, x, y, and z. We know the correlation between x and y and the correlation between x and z, but we are missing the correlation between y and z. What we have and also lack are pairwise correlations. And when considering correlations between multiple random variables, all possible pairwise correlations can be represented as a matrix. We arrange our relations into a three by three matrix. Index one, two, and three on the rows and columns being associated with the variables x, y, and z respectively. Each element, each row, and column index pair represent the pairwise correlations between two variables. Filling this in, note that along the diagonal, the correlations are of each variable with itself. The matrix will be symmetrical along the diagonal. From the problem description, most of the matrix can be filled, with the exception of the correlation between y and z. With that, the correlation matrix C is now populated. Let the unknown correlation between y and z be the value r. We want to solve for r and we have to leverage the other elements of the matrix. It will be some matrix property that we are trying to leverage. Because the elements are correlation coefficients and the matrix is a correlation matrix, we can exploit a property known to all correlation matrices. That is, they are by definition positive semi-definite or PSD. The precise definition of this property is too wide a scope for the video, but an analogy would be the positiveness or negativeness of a matrix. Similar to how numbers can be positive or negative or equal to zero, matrices can too have a positive or negativeness associated with them, which like numbers will affect the type of operations that can be performed with them. For simplicity and to draw some practical applications of this property, correlation matrices come from the, de from the decomposition of the covariance matrix which measures covariances between random variables. A non-PSD matrix results in the possibility of variances being negative, which violates the, the very definition of variance, which is a sum of squared products. Hence, it can never be less than zero. While there are various tests for the PSD of a matrix, we want something simple to calculate like the determinants. Hence, the following test, which involves the determinants, will be used. A symmetric matrix Q is positive semi-definite if and only if all of its principal minors are more than or equal to zero. Huh? 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 Some of you might be thinking, what is a minor? And most of you will be correct. It is probably not referring to someone below the age of 18, depending on where you are tuning in from. No, minors are determinants of smaller square matrices that are created by first removing rows and columns of a symmetric matrix Q. In fact, some of you would have been determining and calculating minus without even realizing it. Take the determinants of our correl correlation matrix C. Using the standard method of calculating determinants of a three by three matrix, the Laplace expansion, or also known as the cofactor expansion, we start from the first row, first column. That first element, we take that value and we multiply it by the determinant of the remaining two by two square matrix after having removed the first row and first column. That determinant being calculated is known as a minor. Similarly, for the second minor, removing the first row and second column, and also the third minor, removing the first row and the third column. What we have here is the formula for the determinant of our three by three correlation matrix. Let's keep that in mind for now because that will come in handy. Huh. Look, I get it. Preparing for corner interviews is tiring, doing hours of practice questions. So why not take a break by learning about my experience of the interviewing for quant roles in London so you don't repeat my mistakes and land your dream quant job by following the link on the top right. Now back to the question. Minus exists for each case order of the matrix, where k is between 1 and n, where n is the number of rows slash columns. In our case, n is equal to 3, 
So there are first, second, and third order minus associated with our correlation matrix. But we are interested in specifically the principal minus, not just any minor. The breakdown of finding the principal method and why it is structured that way is beyond the scope of this video. So please follow the link in the description for a better understanding. But for now, just trust the process. For the first order, k is equals to 1. For first order minus, we are removing n minus k rows and columns. Since k is equals to 1, we are removing 3 minus 1 equals to 2. So we are removing 2 rows and 2 columns. For the principal minus, we are specifically removing the following. Rows and columns with index 2 and 3. With a remaining matrix of just a single element of 1, hence its determinant is simply just 1. Similarly for the next minor in this order, we remove columns and rows with index 1 and 3. Once again getting a minor of 1. Similarly, for the third minor, we remove rows and columns with index 1 and 2. Once again, getting a determinant slash minor of 1. For the second order, k is equal to 2. And since we are removing n minus k rows and columns, with k equals to 2, we are now rem removing 3 minus 2 equals to 1. So we are removing one row and one column. For the principal minus, we are specifically removing the following rows and columns with index 1, with the remaining matrix of just the following 2 by 2 square matrix. And calculating the determinants, we get 1 minus r squared as shown. For the next minor, we remove rows and columns with index 2, getting the following square matrix, 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 1, and finding the determinant, we get 0 0.36. And similarly for the third minor, which is removing rows and columns with index 3, once again getting a minor slash determinant of 0 0.36. For the third order, k is equal to 3. And for third order minus, we are now removing 3 minus 3 equals to 0 rows and columns. So we are not removing any rows and columns, and hence, in this case, there is only one minor, the principal minor, which is simply the determinant of the original 3 by 3 correlation matrix which we had already calculated earlier in the video, which reduces to the following after some arithmetic, 1 minus r times r minus 0 0.28. Notice that all the principal minus across all the orders have diagonal elements that come from the main diagonal of the original 3x3 three three matrix, so that is just one of the signs that what we have is a principal minor. Looking again at the requirements of PSD, a symmetric matrix Q is positive definite if positive semi-definite if and only if all its principal minors are more than or equal to zero. So we need to check for each order of the matrix that the principal minors found are more than or equal to zero. For the first order, all three of them are one, which does satisfy the requirement of more than or equal to zero. For the second order principle, with the exception of the first one, the other two, 0 0.36, does satisfy the requirements. And for the third order, it is expressed in this unknown R. With the exception of two values expressed in R, the rest satisfies this requirement. All that's left is to find values of R that satisfy the property of PSD for these two principal minors. Expanding the second order principal minor using the difference of squares, we have the following two inequalities. Solving for R that satisfies the second order principal minor, the values of R can be split into three regions as follows, region 1, region 2, and region 3. With some observation, we can see that we only region 2 satisfies the inequality because a value of r from either region 1 or region 2 will result in this product being negative, which violates this inequality. Hence, the range of values of r is between minus 1 inclusive and 1 inclusive. Similarly, solving for r that satisfies the third order principle minor, the values of R can be split into three regions, 1, 2, and 3. And once again, only region 2 satisfies the inequality, hence the range of values of R for the third order principal minor is more than or equal to 0 0.28 and less than or equal to 1. In order to satisfy both inequalities, R must be in both solution sets. So the range of R that satisfy both inequalities are the values in the intersection of the two solution sets, which is are more than or equal to 0 0.28 and less than or equal to 1. Hence, the minimum correlation between y and z is 0 0.28 and the maximum is 1. For more interview questions, click the playlist on the right.